This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by our good buddies at Squarespace. Turn your great idea into a reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind. With beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. And if you do get stuck, Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support is there to help. And I know this for a fact because I use Squarespace and I highly recommend. So head to squarespace.com slash grace for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code grace, G-R-A-C-E, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Here we go. Hi, Jack Berry. Hi, Grace Albeck. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep. This is a very exciting episode, it's... as are all of them. Yeah, I'm really excited because uh, Katie, as it turns out. Catherine uh, Renee Thomas. Catherine Renee Thomas, Get yes. it right or pay the price. Yeah. Uh, she's delightful. Uh, yeah, she's an amazing comedian, like, actor, writer, producer. And, and not at all like the mean character she plays no, on her television show. No, on the show. TV Land show, <laughs> Teachers, she's one of the stars and creators of the series. Series, yeah. along with um, like six, five or six other Katie's. <laughs> yes. Well, I think I think you have to, in order to work on the show, your name has to be Katie. Yeah, it's their version of a sorority. <laughs> I can't get in, which is par for the course with me and sororities. But uh, <laughs> it's it's really, really cool. It's a great show if you haven't seen it. I highly recommend it. It's really funny. I think we have this like yeah, association with TV Land being like for our parents. Yeah, but they're uh, apparently they're they've, rebranding. They're rebranded, and you'll hear all about it with Catherine Renee Thomas in a little bit. Before we get into that, because it's a show about elementary school teachers, mm -hmm. do you have one a teacher that stands out in your brain for better or for worse that you remember from elementary school? Oh man, um, I probably shouldn't use her name, but my second grade teacher was uh -huh. a lunatic. Oh no! Yeah, what happened? Uh, she was. I, I just your formative years. I know. Like you know how like you can you can like. Like when you're a kid, you don't realize like, oh, oh this, hindsight's twenty twenty. When you look back and you go, wow, they were oh, a this, bitch to me. Yeah, this person was just an asshole mm -hmm. who just decided they didn't like me I along with like half like, the class. Yeah. And they were probably like 24 years old at the time. And you That's, thought they were like 60. You know what? That's a really good point, too. She's probably much younger than I remember her being. But mm -hmm. yeah, she was a lunatic. And uh, that was like any a, examples. Um, she would just like um, kind of pit classmates against each other Whoa. like as like a disciplinary technique. Yikes. It was very like weirdly Machiavellian. Yeah, it's like Hunger Games. Yeah, it was weird. It was really, really weird. Oh. So she, that was kind of an unpleasant experience. Um, wow. Which, thank you for having me relive it. How yeah. about you? Did you have any weird elementary school um, um, I had, experiences? I might have told the, told the story before, but I remember um, I didn't have this guy as a kindergarten teacher. I, had, I won't say, I had, he was called Mr. Coffee in our um, yearbook because he always had a pot, like a cup of black coffee every day. Uh -huh. Red flag for a kindergarten teacher. Sure. Um, covered, and, covered mug. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and I remember my younger brother, Tim, I was in third grade and he was in kindergarten and my we lived across the street from my elementary school. So my job was to pick him up after class and walk him across the street home every uh -huh. day and there was one day that I guess I didn't do my homework and so I got detention for 15 minutes which meant after class I had to sit with my hands folded on my desk for 15 minutes Ugh. and do nothing torture <laughs> because I forgot I didn't even know it wasn't that I I was such a nerd dork like want to be all A student that I, it truly was a moment where I completely forgot I had homework that right. I was like shocked and didn't have a phone or anything to get in contact with my brother to tell him that I was going to be 15 minutes late to pick him up. You didn't go to the pay, the pay phone and call no, collect. No, <laughs> I don't even know if my brother would understand in kindergarten how to answer a phone. Yeah, and so sure. I got out of my quote detention and ran over to the kindergarten class and Mr. Coffee was sitting there with my little brother who was sobbing like tears. Because you weren't like, there to pick him up. Yeah, he had no idea it was going on mm -hmm. and he Mr. Coffee was like oh what a bitch he was like on his knee like rubbing my brother's shoulders like consoling him and I came and I was like I'm so sorry I had to stay after class and he looked me right in the eyes and he just goes to me you're a bad sister and Ugh. then stands up and walks back into the classroom and so I'm just left there like mouth agape like 
seven or eight years now old. Now you're crying. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Mr. Coffee. Oh, man. Yeah. He was a real bitch. Shaping, a, shaping young minds. Yeah. What an appropriate kindergarten teacher emotional state to constantly be in bitterness. <laughs> Just pure bitterness. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, really made me the person I am today. <laughs> and it's thoroughly made me hate children and the idea of uh, education on an elementary school level of all sorts. Sure. So, and you got to play a teacher in my show. Yes, I did. Well, what? Which was very fun. Yeah, did you but enjoy that? But that was a high school teacher. Yeah, it's true. Which is a little strange because, yeah, I, I, I guess I always assume that I'm like too young to be a teacher when in reality I'm the age that most of my high school teachers oh, yeah. probably were. You'd be tenured by now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so it was a little weird that I, I think of myself as like I have the maturity level of like a 16 year old. So being around actual 16 year olds, I felt like a peer, but I was supposed to be the like the teacher. And so right. it was a little bizarre. And a little like just a nice cold reminder that we're all aging and we can't stop it. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. You were like not that much older than the kids, but that's how that's how it was. Yeah, uh, it's nuts. But hey, huge shout out to all the teachers out there. We cannot do what you do. And we fully admire those of you that are doing the Lord's work in the best way possible. Completely agree. And um, I hope that someday soon you all get fairly compensated for yeah. the very difficult work that that Good is. Good God. I mean, in the meantime, let's hear about the fictitious world of teaching elementary school kids. Can't and wait. perhaps hear a fun tale of Catherine Renee Thomas causing a girl to piss her pants. <laughs> I don't want to give any spoilers away, but... You know, take a listen. This is a really fun interview with Catherine Renee Thomas from Teachers on this episode of Not Too Deep. No, not, not too deep. With Clay Seidbeck. Oh, thank God. Today's episode is sponsored by our good buddies at Squarespace. Yay. Um, I mean, you guys know this already, but if you don't, get ready because Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project. What kind of projects are we talking about? Yeah, whether you're looking to start a new business... Showcase your work, publish content, sell products, and more. Squarespace is the tool for you. They have beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks. You can easily make a beautiful website all by yourself. And this is true because I use Squarespace, mm -hmm. so I know. And they've got powerful e-commerce functionality that lets you sell anything online and analytics to help you grow your site in real time. And this is something you might not think about, but everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box, and there's no Nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is really simple, and you'll get all the help you'll need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. They empower millions of people from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, even restaurants and gyms to Jack Fairies to turn <laughs> great ideas into something real. So turn your dream into a reality with Squarespace. Head on over to squarespace.com slash grace for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code GRACE to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That is squarespace.com slash grace, offer code GRACE. Not, not too deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by our good buddies at the Beyond Burger. Yes, the uncompromisingly delicious plant-based burger that is packed with protein and better for you and guess what, our planet too. And the Beyond Burger, look, guys, it's not your hippie college mm -hmm. roommate's veggie burger. No way. Okay? It's a sizzling sensation created for meat lovers everywhere. Yeah. In fact, it's the only plant-based burger, get this, that is so meaty, it's sold in the meat case at grocery stores nationwide. And it's made from simple ingredients, not meat, mm -hmm. applied in fresh ways. They use protein from peas, potato starch, and coconut oil without gluten, soy, or or GMOs. This delicious plant-based Beyond Burger comes with less baggage and more benefits so you can eat what you love and feel better while doing it. So this summer, add some sizzle to your grill with this revolutionary burger that satisfies even the most ravenous of carnivores. And as we discussed before, Grace, mm -hmm. you've had the I've Beyond had Burger. It. I have had it and it is truly satisfactory above and beyond yeah. it satisfies on a very bizarre level because it looks and has the texture of me almost right the density of me you usually don't get that you usually get more of like a rubbery kind of um fake meat product well yeah if you're eating your hippie college roommates veggie burger. yeah i guess that's what i was eating but not <laughs> anymore uh and you can get ready to taste the future of protein made from plants by visiting beyondmeat.com slash grace and clicking the where to find button to find a local retailer near you that's beyondmeat.com slash grace this is so exciting it is we have Catherine renee thomas uh -huh. with us today hello <laughs> should we just call you uh you, Catherine renee uh you can call me katie <laughs> katie <laughs> okay, okay. okay well because we had a huge mix-up 
because um, we we, did. <laughs> we had to double check that you're not the Irish television presenter who I'm loves not. ACDC and owns a fitness program. I'm not, but I wish I was. <laughs> Do you know this woman? That- um, so I know all ki- you know. I know all kinds of variations of my name. Right. Um, so you know, I always grew up going by Katie, uh-huh. and then when I moved to LA and had to join SAG, um, SAG yeah. mm-hmm. there was already a Katie Thomas, yeah, and oh. it's so bizarre. I feel like that's why you see all these three-name yeah. actors coming exactly out, because you why, can't yeah. have two of the same, so I was like, well, I could go by Catherine Thomas, uh-huh. and I couldn't go by Katherine Thomas, because that was taken also, Jeez. so I was like, well, what about Katie Renee Thomas? Couldn't do that, <laughs> so now- Katie Renee Thomas I was mean, taken? Um, you know what? I think I actually no. You know what? It might not have been. I think I just thought it sounded dumb. I thought <laughs> Catherine Renee. Yeah, why well, have, have an been. abbreviated yeah. name Catherine with Renee a three Thomas. name name? Well, yeah. Catherine yeah. Renee Thomas sounds like an actress. Katie Renee Thomas. Right. You know, I, I don't. Well, I don't disagree. You sound like you could be on Broadway. Oh, oh, wow, <laughs> I can't. Um, I, I will say though that the Katie Thomas that was the one in SAG is a uh-huh. porn star, well, and I oh, knew about her. And she's in SAG. I knew about her. She's nodding her head. She's like, oh, "Yep." Mel knows. Yep. Mel yep. knows. I'm familiar what's your with favorite, her. What's your favorite movie of hers, Mel? Um, <laughs> I, I found that out when I was building my first website <gasps> because I was like, "Oh, I'm sure Katie Thomas is taking because it's like the most generic white girl name you've ever like heard." Katie Thomas.com. Yeah, and yeah. so I went, and it. I mean, she loves. I don't. I won't say it. She's, She's got a category. She nasty. She, nasty. she does. <laughs> you should buy um, Katie Thomas dot xxx oh just out God. of like retaliation. Like, <laughs> seriously, seriously. And, but for a while, my bit was uh, when people would be like, "Do you have a website?" I go, "Yeah, it's katiethomas.com. Oh my! Just like God. sending them. That's so but, funny. Um, let yeah. them figure it out. Yeah. Oh. Uh, no, I love it. And we were talking because I, I, I just want to like dive into this because sure. I love everything that you guys are doing on uh, the TV land hit series teachers. It's in basically you're knee deep in season three yeah. right now. Oh, yeah. Um, one, it's awesome because it's just like females supporting strong, funny, brilliant females. I've been looking at your Instagram and going through like your uh, fil- female filmmaker Fridays uh-huh. oh, yeah. and like loving all of it yeah. and just getting like I got goosebumps on the way over like going through. I shouldn't uh-huh. have been looking and driving, but I <laughs> was just like so pumped on it. And you were saying you guys are literally in the middle of season three and you oh, yeah. guys are so hands on with this. It seems like. Oh, yeah. We're we're incredibly involved, which is crazy because this came out of a web series. Right. So this tell me how yeah, this started. Because yeah. it started in like a, a in Chicago. Yeah. 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 So so, um, so we started improvising. Our, our group is called the Katie Dids. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of all the Katies, yeah. uh, it yeah. just started as this dumb <laughs> joke where Caitlin Barlow knew a bunch of women in the improv community. We we're on the kind of same gen- generation doing shows at IO and, and The Annoyance in Second City. And um, uh, she pitched that we all do a show together. And um, and it was it was uh, a show at IO. They were calling for submissions. It was okay. called Radical Concept. And she's like, our Radical Concept is we all have the same name. <laughs> <laughs> Not that radical. Whoa. Oh, not that radical, blowing. and uh, and they said no, and they didn't let us in the show. That's so we funny. started out of failure, uh, <laughs> but we were like, you know, let's just do a one-off show, and we did a one-off show at a black box theater in, in Chicago called the Playground, and um, we had great chemistry, and mm. so we just kept improvising. So cool. we had no idea that ten years later there would be six, you know, dummies all with the same name yeah. improvising and making a show together. So it's it's a it's super annoying. Like, I'm Katie. I'm Katie. I'm Katie. I'm Katie. Um, so we met in Chicago. We were improvising, and then. We started doing videos that went, I mean, not super viral, but like they did well enough yeah. that they got a little attention. I mean, today's numbers nowhere near viral. But um, but yeah, and we we shot a web series called Teachers, uh, and uh it did really well. We got connected with William Morris mm-hmm. and um they were like, let's try to sell it. And at that point, we thought, oh, well, maybe we'll sell the idea. Sure. Maybe we could get created by credits, maybe, you know, I mean, because yeah. we were just you have no idea. No the, idea. The the industry works in different ways constantly. Yeah. Anytime you try to create anything, yeah. there's no one formulaic way to make anything. No. So I'm sure that you're just like, we'll take whatever we can get. Of course. And, you know, we were just, again, we were just used to being told no a lot. And right. you know, that's what every actor's, writer's story is getting told no a lot. So um, when we ended up with TV Land offering a, a pilot to us, we were really, really shocked when they were like, no, we, we're going to cast all, all six of you can still be in it. <gasps> All six of you can executive produce it, wow. and all six of you can write it, which wow. was shocking to us because wow. I, I mean I think one of the biggest fears was like was like oh they'll like 
Picking picked it. two of us to oh, be yeah. on the show. Oh, Only yeah. five and of you then, are coming. Exactly. We're leaving you in this room with exactly. a pull cue. I know. You figure it out. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The blood pack you made is now yeah, thrown to right. shit. Yeah. Yeah. But it was really, um, it was really wonderful the way it happened because we were shopping around for EPs and names to put on the show because mm-hmm. we're nobodies and it's just not how it works. If you don't have a name attached, it's, you know, it's yeah, hard sure. to do. So, yeah. so we got connected with Allison Bree, who, signed on to be our EP and we were going to go out and pitch and before we even went out to pitch William Morris said well TV Land is trying to rebrand they want some younger content Um, they're looking for a young female driven workplace comedy that's a little edgy and raunchy (laughs) and it was great because they were able to go here are 22 webisodes of this here's some of concept that already has a following that was our pitch Mm -hmm. and they were like cool we want a pilot and here's cool. a bunch of critic control. That's amazing. It's in, it's insane. It's That's, bananas. So how long ago was that? So we shot the web series in 2012. Okay. Oh, wow. So it's been like six years. Yeah, it's been a long project. And then um, we shot the pilot in 2014. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I my husband and I drove cross country. Uh, and two days later, we met with Ian Roberts and Jay Martell, who are showrunners. Wow. wow. And started writing the pilot. So it was it was Holy really moly. bad. It was like a lot of hurry up and wait. And yeah. suddenly it was like, okay, hurry up. Now it's we gotta write up. the pilot. And <laughs> my husband hurry and I up. sold everything and drove across the country. So it was more so, wait and hurry hurry up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of waiting, let's be honest. <laughs> That's awesome yeah. though. So how has it changed from now that you're in the middle of season three? Yeah. How has the process changed for all of you guys? Oh my gosh. It's um it's it's been an incredible like TV boot camp for us because we all came out of a world of improv and sketch comedy for the most part. Sure. We weren't really writing pilots. We weren't writing for TV. Mm-hmm. Um, we were trying to, you know, book things. Mm. Right. And you don't what, know until but, you do it. Yeah. So because we have so much creative control, we learned so much. So I mm-hmm. think it's changed a lot in that we've taken even more control every season of different aspects of the process. I think oh, cool. the first season we came on so green that it was like, what do you think? Okay, yeah, whatever yeah. you think, uh, <laughs> showrunner or producer or network. Mm-hmm. And um but what was wonderful about the network was oftentimes they were like, no, 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 we want more of your voice. We go, well, is this okay? And they go, yeah, more, wow. which is totally insane. That's very That's rare. Great. Yeah, yeah, That's amazing. Yeah, and so, um, so we've really kind of taken the bull by the horns and um, just tried to get as involved in every step of the way as we possibly can. And I think it's changed since first season in that we, after first season, all kind of said, hey, like. You know, the first season, I think we were all trying to prove that we were the best at everything. Sure. Because we just want it. You don't want to let anyone down. You want to be good at writing. and You want to be good at It's a lot yeah, of you jobs. you want to seize your opportunity. Yeah. But but I think the fact of the matter is you just can't, you, you can't love every single part of the process. Right. And I think we were all kind of afraid in the first season to go, you know what? I don't really like being in the editing bay. Or like, <laughs> I don't really love writing that much. Or I don't, you know. Yeah. And we had these honest conversations after first season about like, oh, you know, I actually do want to be a showrunner or I do want a director. And, yeah. and what can I do this next season to give me more of the skills I need to be able to accomplish that eventually? That's great. And so I think we've all kind of figured out little things that we're really good at and and supported each other in that because, like, you know, this the show's not going to go forever and this is a great opportunity for us to learn. But that's great to have, like, a safe space that yeah. you guys can have those kind of honest conversations yeah. and distribute the wealth, yeah. like the talent wealth, and make the show better than it could be by, you know, not wasting your time being like, I'm just going to sleep in an edit bay. I don't know. Yeah. It's a waste of my, like, physical space to be there for you guys. Yeah. I think that's super important. Also, you guys have a ton of comedy legends come through the show yeah. constantly. It's been really cool. Has there been one that's been standout or like paramount to you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And on top of that, is there someone like a unicorn get that you haven't gotten yet? Okay, so I recently had that experience with Thomas Lennon. That like, oh, he's incredible. I hero. I had no idea, and I and like I of course I I've known him forever. I was a comedy geek when I was a kid, and so I've been watching him for a long time and really respected him. Um, But I got to shoot an episode a few weeks ago where he and I were opposite each other a lot throughout the episode, Mm -hmm. and um, I just feel like I learned so much from him about um, just he was so chatty and lovely and real, which I really loved and was appreciative of, especially because I am such a fan. You know, sometimes. Around and I'm like, okay, do I not look in their <laughs> eye? Do I do 
or not. Like, don't make eye contact. Don't make. Uh, um, and he was just so easy to talk to. And so he would. Cool. He was just kind of doling out stories about his experience oh, awesome. with writing or pitching shows or, you know, and the good things and the bad things. Finding out that you were fired off a show you wrote, you know, through deadline and not Jeez. through Ugh. someone else and that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, and also just learning about performing because he came on set and what we had him doing was totally insane. I think I saw a photo on your Instagram. Yeah. You guys look like Muppets. It's bananas. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a whole thing <laughs> where we are in a children's pop yeah. group uh, together. A la, like the Wiggles. The Wiggles, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, we were running around in, in unitards in Woodland Hills at, in like 100 degree weather and he As was great. He was gay. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but every single moment he was there, he was trying to make everything funnier. Oh, that's great. And we're great. a low budget show. That's you know, great. we couldn't give the dude too much money. Yeah. And he showed up and he, you know, we did choreography rehearsals with Kat wow. Burns, who's oh, she's Emmy amazing. nominated or yeah. winning. I mean, women winning choreographer she's for absolutely fantastic. Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Uh-huh. And from the second he walked into the to the dance rehearsal, he was like, Is this funnier if I do this? Is it funny if I do this? Is oh, it funny if I do this? Just constantly pitching funny things. And so that's I great. think he um, it was recent, but it was one of those moments where I was like, oh, like this is like a hero. I yeah. would love to have the career that he has and the way he does it. Oh, it's nuts. Yeah. yeah. Unicorn. Yeah. Is there anyone that hasn't been on that's like a major get, whether it's yeah. comedy or in other yeah. aspects of life? Um, we really, uh, we were really try- trying for, um, there are a few names that keep coming up over and over again. And we're like, mm, I don't know if we're ever going to get them. But um, Chelsea Handler was one, oh, yeah. sure. especially as we're trying to do some more episodes that feel a little more not overly political or, you know, but trying to more say topical. a little bit more things than, yeah. because she's been so active in that mm-hmm. right now. Um, that's been a, that's been one for us. We came really close because one of our directors, Jake Harris, uh, directed on After Lately. Gotcha. So he's got a relationship with her and we almost got her for a role uh, and then the fires were going on in Bel Air, oh, yeah. and like her house was. I mean, it was so. Uh, she had you're like the universe it, it, is keeping it, us apart. apart. <laughs> but it was wonderful because we ended up. Um, Natasha Leggero came in into that oh, role. Who's, am- who's amazing? Yes, one of our favorites. Yeah, she was like seven months pregnant. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> amazing! <laughs> and she's so tiny. She looked like she was twelve months pregnant. Oh, um, yeah. she was amazing. Also, you're pregnant this season. Yeah, yeah. What's that like? Oh, it was weird. Um, yeah. As a I mean, female, yeah. Because you're wearing a belly. Yeah, I do. I wore. I was not actually pregnant. Um, right. That, uh, I, I was just fact checking. No, girl. We're gonna get to your fur baby later. Yes. Yeah, so, I want to talk about Piper. But we'll talk yeah. About her. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it was a. It was a. Pregnant pregnancy pad and it was I mean it wasn't was that, that uncomfortable it was weird I've never worn one so I'm fascinated when women yeah. that have never yeah. been pregnant put one on for the first time it was odd so the first one they had me in because we had two sizes okay uh, low budget show we can't get two seconds <laughs> yeah. so the so first like the second trimester and third that's, trimester that's all we get that's all we get <laughs> so the first one they had on me looked really real in that like the skin Ooh. had imperfections and like, like a veins mold and stuff. oh wow and like just looked spotty and yeah. looked a little too real oh that's um, crazy um, and so I put it on and I was like, okay, this is weird. But I think the really amazing moment for me was the first week uh, of shooting with that. It was our first week back on on set for season three. And a lot of our crew members are the same crew members from last season. And we've oh, got a great, great relationship with them and they're the best. And um, I had to do a scene where I lifted up my shirt uh, and one of the girls was putting dollar bills down my yeah. pants like a stripper. <laughs> um, and... The whole and I was standing on a table and I just looked around and the whole crew was staring at my belly with these wide <laughs> eyes, like really freaked out and uncomfortable. And and I had a lot of people ask if they could touch it because it really? looked so weird so and real. real. And I go, oh, this is what pregnant ladies are talking about when oh, they're like, like, everyone thinks they own your body. Wow. They want it. They can right, touch it. Right, they right. can ask you. They can stare. They can ask you questions. You know. And it was one of those. I mean, it was a real like feminist yeah. <laughs> moment for me yeah. where I'm like, this is my body <laughs> this is my belly this don't is my touch costume. it um, <laughs> but my I was prosthetic. exactly but it was it was disgusting because it was so hot and, and yeah, you know I can't sure imagine it, like the misery just takes you over that yeah. you're like this is just wildly uncomfortable <laughs> yeah. that helped you get into character uh, it did 
did. I did. <laughs> it, it played into my character as kind of rotten, <laughs> shitty. <laughs> what did your husband think of the pregnant belly? Um, yeah, I mean, he was he was like, oh, that's weird. I mean, like he never got, he was never on set near it. I don't. Think. So he didn't get to see it firsthand. Yeah, no. Okay. I mean, we 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 want those kind of babies eventually. So you know, I get a lot of texts this season. My mother in law is so sweet. She texts me after every single episode of the Aww. show. Katie, I love the show. Uh, and she's but she, I've gotten a few of those like you look so cute when you're pregnant. Oh god, the passive yep. aggressive. Yeah, yeah, it is. yeah no. Read between she's, the lines here. She's wonderful though. She she's she's great. She's well, let's trip. talk about your actual yeah. fur baby, Piper. Sure. Oh, please. How did you get Piper? Oh, so um cuz I also looked through the Instagram of you recreating cute. photos of Piper I mean, with Piper in re- it's pretty great. Yeah. Yeah, we have too much fun. I mean, that's all my pictures. But I think that's not un- un- an unusual for No, for, for Instagram, that's what Instagram's that's, made that's for. That's all you do. Yeah. That's all you do. Um, so Piper, we uh, we got her in Chicago. Okay. Um, my husband and I had been together for a year, and we kind of knew right away that we're the ones. Um, and so, uh, and part of how I knew it was one is I had two cats. Uh-huh. Um, I was always a dog person, but I just, with comedy and it's, easy, it's to hard have to have a dog. So yeah. I had two cats, and I met him, and he's super allergic. And after a few months, I was like... I'll find a new home for them if we need, if you know, like because Whoa. he's so allergic. Yeah. And I found a very good home. I didn't dump him. I didn't, right. you know, great home for them. Um, but I was like, well, you better believe we're gonna get a dog though. If I do this for you <laughs> in six months, if I don't have a dog, I'm out. If I made this sacrifice, yeah. you gotta Yeah. 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 So we uh, we went to the uh, anti cruelty society in Chicago um and found her and she just come from Knoxville, Tennessee. We have no wow. idea what her background was. She was about a year when we got her. No idea if it was like a kill shelter that sure. they were trying to get animals out of or what. But um but yeah, she's um we found her and we we were looking around and we didn't see any great dog. I mean, we saw so many great dogs, but the ones we were meeting didn't feel quite right for us. Like and then, the right fit, yeah. Yeah, and, and we walked by this one cage and had a blanket over it. And John, <laughs> John my husband, goes, oh, well, what's... what's who, what monster lies beneath? Like, <laughs> like, let's make a deal. Yeah. I want what's behind the curtain. <laughs> totally, totally. And so we lifted it up, and there she was. And oh. we were like, why is the blanket on her? And she was just facing the street, like the mm-hmm. window. And so they said she's very easily, um, you know, activated yeah. by... By senses, and so we took her out. And we just fell in love with her, and she's Aww. she's a ter- she's terrier mix, and so she's just loud and barky, sure. constantly. And I think, but they're look, very smart. She's very smart. very smart. She's very smart. She learns words very quickly. That's cool. Um, yeah, yeah. She can tell you the definition of anything. It's just really <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's awesome. But, uh, I, looking, Does she be yeah. your words of friends? <laughs> Always. Oh my god. <laughs> Always. So, so I think looking back, I'm like, oh, they had the blanket on her because she was super annoying because she probably <laughs> sure. like every time someone walked by on, on Ohio Street or Ontario wherever it was so she'd lose her mind wow. so, but, but she's, she's a lovely. super cutie she how is. does she like Los Angeles she loves it yeah uh, we joke about we left Chicago because we wanted a better life for our daughter <laughs> <laughs> it was so cold and we left it was the polar vortex it was oh, like, yeah, poor, but we had sure. to put the little booties on her oh my gosh. and the jackets and all that and so now she's free to run around like crazy and it's a better life for her she loves it and you guys I mean you made the sacrifice we You're did good it parents. was all for her <laughs> um, okay I want to talk to you about this pack limitless challenge oh god what I'm is such this? such a nerd. What is this? Okay, this is my, okay. Because this is your form I'm of exercise, LA. right? Yeah, so, so. I don't know anything about this. Okay, so I, I, when, I, growing up, I was like, not really athletic. Okay. I kind of like, softball and then had a had a burn experience in seventh grade where I was clearly the like pity pick oh, to no. put on the team and they never oh, played that me. That sticks with you. Yeah and then I went into my like dark goth punk days in sure. high school where I was like sports and jocks. <laughs> so, oh shut up. I hate sports and um and then I um I got like I got really into yoga when I was in Chicago. I did mm-hmm. teacher training. I was so into it I moved out to LA and there were so many yoga studios I felt kind of overwhelmed it's that I lot. couldn't find like one where not every single teacher was an actress who you know like you <laughs> know just didn't feel authentic I just didn't love yeah. it and then there was a CrossFit gym a couple blocks from me and a couple gals I knew were going and I'm like that's not me I'm not a meathead I'm not into it and then they convinced me to go and I totally fell in love it f- with it so for about two years I was doing CrossFit and oh, I cool. became that jock and that <laughs> meathead who loves to lift weights and but do Olympic like, lifting I love it the endorphins I love it yeah our good friend Jared is a CrossFitter and yep. he talks a lot at length about like just the positive impact it's that great. like 
the community has. It's even. great. And that was one thing for me, too, is like I needed a community outside of comedy and yeah. entertainment. Sure. And um, I love the Katie Dids. They're my sisters. But we spend all our time together. Right. So, um, so it became that for me. It was amazing. And then a few of the people from that CrossFit CrossFit box. That's a term. Oh, I didn't know that. The box. Yeah, they don't call them gyms. No, they're, they're boxes. They're, they're mm-hmm. boxes, girl. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's sexy. The idea is it's supposed to be like this, like grungy place where you can just like drop the weights. Exactly. And it's cool. like, they're just like a flickering light always in the corner of all of them. Exactly. Yeah, it's like designed to be grungy. Oh, it's cool. yeah. It's like dirty. Yeah. Leave dirty and, and bloody. <laughs> and um, and so I followed a couple of my instructors over to a new gym that they opened. And it's not a CrossFit gym. Um, and I and I also felt like I was getting a little burnt out on CrossFit because sure. it was it was kind of uh yeah it was a little scary you move as much weight as you possibly can yeah it's high intensity all the time as fast as you can and yeah. I'm like I'm gonna hurt myself yeah it feels like that's prone to injury yeah so I followed these guys over to this great gym called Pharaoh's um and uh one of the owners he like trained the Amazon women and Wonder Woman Whoa. like oh wow like yeah so they're what a resume they're pretty cool they're pretty that's pretty cool <laughs> some celebs that go there no do they deal. have their signed headshots up on the wall I though. wish they would they're very new so it's I'm sure it's only a matter of time look at their Instagram fingers crossed I, Halle Berry might be somewhere in there what? Instagram wow. yeah, I was not there that day um, but um, but yeah so I, I followed them over they did this thing called the Pack Limitless Challenge okay yeah Pharaoh's Athletic Club Limitless Challenge they did two of them and I did one in January and I did one recently and it was basically like like let's just get you to your your goals and for me especially when I'm in production with teachers and like right the writer's mm-hmm. room for me is the worst part because I I don't like to sit for too long and you sit all day and you argue and it's stressful it's yeah and you're stuck argue. you're stuck and yeah you're, and then crafty comes in and you've got M and M's and yeah and and yeah, all that sure. and, so, and you're doing no physical yeah. activity yeah. at all whatsoever yeah. yeah and I and I have a lot of anxiety like I deal with anxiety like crazy and so that really grounds me and mm-hmm. to have that community so I'm like you know what I'll do this this challenge and so it was like basically a, you know like for your body type this is how you should eat this is how you should, how many times a week you should be exercising and all that and so I did it twice mm-hmm. the second time we did it, it was a team. Thing. So I was on a team oh. with another girl, another Katie, not one of the Katie bits. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. What the heck? Yeah, I know. It's, it's so weird. Pathetic. Wow. It's sad. You're like this Katie, I'm like, like gravitational force. I'm trash. <laughs> um, and then three, like, wonderful, wonderfully handsome, very fit gay men. Also named Katie? Uh, no, <laughs> Family but names, I wish they would. And one of the men is Sean Sperling, who I think maybe you should have on your show. Sean Sperling, have you seen the Madonna? bar mitzvah boy viral video I don't think okay. so he's in the opening <gasps> credits of Transparent you know in Transparent have you watched Transparent so, I have okay, not watched okay. Transparent anyway that's okay there's all this vintage footage of uh-huh. like real people who are clearly maybe trans or gay sure um, and there's this little clip of Sean when he was 13 in like 1992 he comes out um, and he does the entire dance to Vogue Yes, I have Madonna. seen this. Yes. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of it? Yes. And um, he takes his little blazer off yes, and he's yes. got an airbrushed image of Madonna <laughs> on the back of his white button down shirt. <laughs> and, he, and he does the entire thing and everyone is losing their shit. They love it. It's not? so supportive. It's wonderful. And so now he's, you know, a 30, he's, on your team he's a 37 year old man at my gym and we're buddies That's and cool. he's so great he's a he does a lot of public speaking and um yeah he's you look him up online he's got millions I of gotta views. go check yeah that's yeah. incredible wow. yeah and he's been on like ellen and kimmel talking Amazing. about this video it's but adorable. so you guys work together for this challenge yeah. Yeah. and so is it so it's collectively groups of five yeah four or five four yeah, or five yeah, yeah. are mm-hmm. all trying to reach their goals yeah yeah and so okay. like at the end they like they check out your 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 weight Lost your muscle lock gotcha. or your muscle gain, all that, and then you win prizes. But what mostly, win? oh, you know, like membership, extra memberships. Nice. We got trophies. Oh. No big deal. <laughs> My team Whoa. might have gained Whoa. the most muscle and lost the most fat. <laughs> Maybe. Um, but really, for me, like, yeah, it's amazing, and I feel so much better. But I, for me, it's really all about anxiety and like stress oh, control. Sure. Yeah, it's I for am that. like. You I'm know. the same way. I run. Like, yeah. that's my form of yeah. exercise. But it's not so much a form of exercise as much as it is, like, an anti-anxiety totally. system for myself. Totally. The Zoloft can only do so much. Yes. <laughs> it's wonderful, and I love it. I got to sweat a little bit, though. But, yeah, it's 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 a different thing. A hundred percent. Okay. You guys recently had Nick Vale on an episode. Yeah. 
from The Bachelor. Yeah. Are you into terrible reality programming? I'm it's not. Just, oh, okay. It's okay. I, it's, yeah. I. You're one of the good people. I, no, no, no. <laughs> I, trust me, I'm a terrible person. Um, no, the, a, a lot of the girls in the group uh, are very into The Bachelor or Bachelorette. And, and it's, you know, it's like it is for most people, which is it's just trash. It's like it's pure wonderful trash. trash that makes you happy and takes you out of the real world. It's like eating cake icing. Absolutely. It's just yes. like oh. you feel good for a little yeah. bit and then you feel really yeah. bad. Why? Why? <laughs> yeah. um, and I, you know, I watched one season of The Bachelor because we did, we Skyped into a uh, after the after show, the Bachelor after show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I watched one season, and I was like, I see how you could get addicted to this, and you could watch it all right. the time. I mean, my problem right now is I have so uh, I've there's so much there's so much TV to watch. Yes. Yeah, what are you watching right I, now? I, so I'm, I imagine yeah. when you're making a show, it's hard to like keep up with everything it's else that's hard. being made and watch things and like yeah. fill your brain. Yeah, and um and so and like my husband and I bond watching TV. That's like the time we come home when we we make a family pile. That's what we call it with Piper. <laughs> We all get in one little nook of the couch and we make our family pile and we watch TV together. And my husband doesn't want to watch The Bachelor. Bachelor. I, I kind of don't either, but it's it's also one of those things, okay, okay, what can we watch together? Yeah. And um, we're watching right now, um, we love... Oh God! Oh, we started watching Barry, which we're loving. Oh yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, Veep is always a favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, we watch a lot of dramas. We watch. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, you we're love, Game of Thrones. You love dramedies. Right? Love dramedies. Love a dramedy. Yeah. What's uh, like? What's I like your transparent? Okay. I like you know I'm anything the Duplass brothers are doing. Have you seen yeah. Divorce? You know? I have not. It's have so not. good. Is it good? It's that so good. That's oh my on Bravo, God. right? That's great. No, it's on oh, uh, HBO. HBO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so funny. I mean, anything on HBO, I'm gonna. Yeah, but it's yeah. great. That's a great like drama. Like, it, there's a lot of like dark, dramatic moments, yeah. but it's so funny. Highly, yeah. highly recommend. I anyway. like the dark, you know, and that I think the way reality is for a lot of the other women in the group, uh, drama and dark stuff is is good for me because I, it's hard to go home and watch comedy. Yeah, yeah. I can. Well, I that's, completely I think understand that. There's a nice. There's like a very pleasant like sliver of darkness. I think under teachers, which oh, is, is like oh, good yeah. because I feel like, and I'm curious about this, like. When you think back as an adult yeah. on the elementary school teachers that you had growing up, right. you realize just a, you have a lot of epiphanies about like the type of people they actually yeah. were or the type of people that they might be now. Absolutely. So I'm sure you guys have had to reflect on like your elementary school experience oh, yeah. for this. Was there... Or is there someone yeah. that you pull your character from or that the other girls kind of pull their characters yeah. from? So when we wrote these characters for the web series, um, we all said, okay, let's find something about ourselves, mm-hmm. either past or current, uh, and heighten it a bit yeah. so we can differentiate between six white women. Um, <laughs> named Katie. A little bit. Oh, named all <laughs> literally with the same name. <laughs> cool. Um, and so my my character came out of who I was or thought I was in high school. Oh, okay. So right. the goth era, the kind of grungy, yeah, punk, yeah. rebellious. Totally. Well, it was funny because I, I was a really good kid. Like, uh-huh. you know, didn't start trying to drink until like like you know my junior year of high school had my first drink like sure. smoked pot for the first time my senior year barely did it at all um got all A's yeah had a great relationship with my parents <laughs> but really fancied myself to be this emotional <laughs> Uh, and little Avril Lavigne. Just, yeah, I was so tortured. And, you know, I grew up right outside of Detroit, and it was an incredibly diverse area where I mm-hmm. grew up. And then for middle school, middle way through middle school, we moved to this very cushy white, gotcha. uh, you know, Christian, you know, and I think that was my kind of like, I got to show that I'm different. Yeah. And so I gravitated toward all, towards all the punk kids. And, and in my school, it was a small group. It was like the goth kids, the gay kids, the punk kids, the hippie kids, all kind yeah. of kids. Together, anyone that didn't like shop at Abercrombie and exactly. Fitch. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Screw Abercrombie. Uh. Let's get a hot topic. Yeah. Well, you know what? Even even I was like, that's so mainstream. But I mean, hot topic didn't come Whoa. around until a little bit like yeah. after I after I grew, kind of grew out of it. But I would go to this place in Royal Oak, in, in right outside of Detroit, and they had a place called Noir Leather. Whoa. And um, it was, and we'd go in there, we'd buy our little like black studded yeah, bracelets yeah. and like dog collars. But what was funny is I do remember kind of glancing over to the other side of the store and seeing crazy bondage, you know, <laughs> like just like really, really crazy stuff and going, 
okay, I'm That's like, I'm really uncomfortable, <laughs> but I'm tough, I'm tough. And I, well, I have my friend Jackie, I remember at one point bought a little studded bracelet from Nora Leather and we realized later that it was actually a cock ring. Oh my God. Um, so she, know, was just, she was just like, look at my bracelet. And it was a cock ring. Oh my God, that's um, so funny. So yeah, so that was me in high school. She's and I was a really, trendsetter. Yeah, totally. <laughs> So, wait, uh, how did you find I out? Think we went, I think we were there basically like every weekend and we went back and we were like, wait, Jackie, did you get, where'd you get your bracelet? It's so cute. Where, where is it in the bracelet? So we're like, oh, it's, mm, yeah. <laughs> so then she put it on her cock and it made a lot more sense. Oh my God. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Most so, functional. Exactly. So, I, so my character came out of like, if, if I had never grown out of that yeah. and was super, yeah. and like. And then we took it even further and further for the web, for the TV show because the web series we all still were a little too similar, so we had to heighten these characters a no, lot. No, it's sure. great, and they don't they don't feel unbelievable. They feel mm-hmm. grounded in reality, which I think Thank is you. what makes the show so fun. Is that you do think back on your grade school teachers and they're yeah. like, oh yeah, that guy was crazy, a freak. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't yeah. coffee he was drinking all no. day long. Got no. it. No. Um, yeah. That's super. Fun. We're gonna take a really quick sure. break and then we're gonna get some Twitter questions cool. for you. We'll be right back with Catherine Rene Thomas on Not Too Deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by FabFitFun. If you don't know, it is a seasonal subscription box that delivers, guess what, full size fashion, beauty, home, fitness, and wellness products four times a year for just $49.99 a box. The FabFitFun fall box is now on presale and starts shipping August 20th. Reserve the highly anticipated fall box today. Get this, if you don't already know, people talk about this online. I got the chance to receive a FabFitFun box and I loved it very much. Like I said, it's loaded with full size products. There are no sample sizes of anything and it's a fantastic value because many of the products that are included are, their individual value is more than the entire cost of the box. The entire, get this, total retail value of the FabFitFun fall box is over $275 and includes products like the Glam Glow Bubble Sheet Mask, Beauty Blender, Vince Camuto Luck Tote, or the Crown Brush six-piece brush set. Like I said, I it was like scratching off a lottery ticket and completely winning every time. So sign up for the FabFitFun box today to get your fall box. Use my code GRACE, G-R-A-C-E, to get $10 off your first box. The FabFitFun fall box is limited supply and these boxes always sell out. So go now, fabfitfun.com to sign up and start getting the box for a life well lived. Again, use promo code GRACE, G-R-A-C-E, to get $10 off your first box, over $270 for only $39.99, fabfitfun.com, promo code GRACE for $10 off your first FabFitFun box. Um, okay, we're going to get into some Twitter questions, Great. but before we do, I'm going to ask you the two questions that I ask every guest that is on the okay. podcast. The first is, who, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? <laughs> um, oh, wow. Yeah, and it's fully up for interpretation. Okay, okay. Some people interpret sure. it negatively, some positive. interpret it positively. Um, I think, um, you know what? I, I would love to throw spaghetti. You know what? Let's call it back. I'd love to th- throw spaghetti at Tom Lennon just because I, <laughs> I would love to see what he'd do with it. I think oh, he'd, he'd really, make it very funny. he'd it would, make it hilarious. It would, so be, I, it very, would be a gentle underhand toss. Yes. <laughs> it would be a very joyous moment. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Um, if he comes back to the show, I'm just giving you I know, a right? scene scenario. Oh my God. I'm going to write this down. <laughs> uh, okay. The other question I ask every guest is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or close call, but you can only use three words or three small phrases. So mine is college jogging front lawn. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Girl. It's okay. Yeah. Um, I never met the people that own the house. That's, so. what, that's what's important. <laughs> yeah. Um, they were unable. To pre- they were unable to press charges. Yeah. 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 Look at you now. I mean, they should be grateful. <laughs> yeah. You know. You're doing well. I was. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh. Marshall's dressing room. <laughs> Oh boy! I worked in a TJ Maxx. This feels too close. Oh, to home. girl, sorry. I'm sure you found some. I worked at I worked, I worked at a Starbucks in Chicago for many years, and um, those bathrooms were. Oh yeah, yeah. There, there's some like epic 
disgusting yeah. but I'm sure okay yes. Starbucks is this is, yes. since your question how long did you spend in Chicago I was in Chicago for six and a half years okay so living in a city like that Jack and I met in New York City mm -hmm. that you make mental maps of where all the public restrooms oh, that you can sure. go to what oh, were your go-to for sure um you know I I would go sometimes I go to my Starbucks to go <laughs> when I go to the employee bathroom because I could go in you know oh, like sing in the back oh sneaky um most you know most of the theaters yeah. were, were pretty good um you know and I always Always, I, I don't know. I'm so Midwestern and polite that a lot of times <laughs> I felt bad going into an establishment if I wasn't buying something yeah. and I had to go to the bathroom. I'm going to buy something, but can I get the code? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like feel really guilty and buy so, like a full meal yeah. just so I could take shit. In the <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think also working in Starbucks where I had to clean up people's shit all the time. I was oh. like, I'm not happy when people just come in to do that. Yeah. For sure. But also, if you work at Starbucks, I feel like you have to know yeah. that that's it's what's it's going to happen. Yeah. I've learned as an adult, I feel like I've upgraded that um, hotels. You can walk right into a hotel oh. lobby. There are bathrooms. Yeah, she's That's not in your head. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> That's brilliant. I had actually even thought can, of that. And That's they're brilliant. always very clean. And because everyone that is staying in the hotel has a room, they're not using the lobby this bathrooms. Is brilliant. So no one's ever right. in there. I learned that in New York City, like the year before I left, there was like a giant Marriott in Times Square that has infinity number of bathrooms that no one is using. This is so, a great for anyone Great piece of listening advice. that is, you know, has a terrible bowel scenario in the middle of Times Square. <laughs> also, most try the Marriott. Uh, most grocery stores have restrooms. I found Italy well. became the place that yeah. I went oh, to. That's a fancy one. A fancy one, but I see. I would go do improv at the People's Improv Theater, <laughs> and Italy mm -hmm. was like the first establishment when I got off the subway. So I would just get off the subway, walk right into Italy, and then go to a show. Oh, I love it. It's a full system. <laughs> 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 okay, let's get into these Twitter questions. Someone wants to know what, and I'm now knowing what your teenage world was like. Oh, yeah. uh, what fashion advice would you give your teenage self? Oh, girl. Um, <laughs> so you are a self-described, like, what was like your style? Kid. Like, yeah, goth punk? Yeah, well, I, I, I had, like, an it was an amalg amalgamation of all that stuff. So okay. I, I would wear, like, really baggy, you know, I, I never had Jenko, but I was say it was, like, <laughs> close. I was, at, I was at Pacific Sunwear. For the, for the young kids, that's PacSun before yeah. it was PacSun. Um, and so I'd wear, like, really baggy, baggy skater jeans, even though yeah. I, I didn't skate. And, uh, uh, like, a really big Tori Amos t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was obsessed with Tori Amos. That's another fun thing. Oh, I was so dark. Um, I would just say, I'd look back and I'd go, girl, um, you, you you got a cute little frame. You don't need to. You don't need to wear like potato sack shape things all the time. All the time. There you go. I mean, you know, and I'm sure your teenage self would be very open to hearing this kind of I advice. Look, screw you. Why don't you go watch Friends and listen to Third Eye Blind and mainstream freak? And then I turn in my my wow, my report card to my parents. That was all A's. And I, go, I don't want to get in trouble. I love that. Yeah, I love that character type. Is like secretly great child. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wrote a poem. Uh, a poem. A, no, it was a it was a short story for Creative Writing Club. I think uh -huh. once, and it was dark. I mean, it was this. I mean, this girl <laughs> is gets raped by her boyfriend, and her wow. parents are abusive. I mean, it was so dark, wow. you guys. I was like fifteen. Wow. And my creative writing teacher pulled me aside and was like. Legally, I have to ask you. If <laughs> oh is no! Okay. Oh, my god. oh god! And my mom's a therapist. My dad's like a writer. They're yeah. really liberal, and wonderful. I was like, no, everything's great. Oh my god! <laughs> Just I'm getting it out. That's so funny. <laughs> Did your parents ever find out about it? I, I think maybe. You yeah. know, they're funny. My my mom would be like, oh, it's just a healthy way to. Yeah, that's healthy. <laughs> what an imagination. She watches me do improv shows and where I'm saying like the most foul things, and she's like, I think it's so great. You can come here and. <laughs> Like, you know, just, I'm going to jack off all over this guy and then I'm like, shit on you. My mom's like, oh. You there know, she is, my daughter. A, what a safe place for her to just be herself. <laughs> she sounds very like wholesome oh, Midwestern. She's amazing. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, okay, someone wants to know what is it like being married to Haley Joel Osment? Oh my gosh! So Haley Joel Osment plays my husband on the show, mm. which is nuts. It's so weird. Because I just amazing. I cannot fully process him as an adult. I know. I still can't. Yeah. He's amazing. You know, he. we saw when we were casting that role, we saw um, like an old, grizzled, you know, failed rock star, yeah. maybe 10 years older than her. And, yeah. um, and uh, Sherry Hernandez, our casting director, pitched Haley. Uh -huh. And it was so not what we thought of yeah. the character. And we were kind of like, what? And um, he 
was in New York, put himself on tape for the role, which oh, is wow. crazy because wow. we get some people for the show that are offer only where we're like, come, like, yeah. you can't just put yourself on a, we you just know, need a just please yeah. read these lines, just read the lines, yeah. I can't, you know, um, and he put himself on tape and was really funny and a totally different vibe of the character. Yeah, and it was brilliant. And he came on set and, um, you know, we work with a lot of child actors. Yeah, yeah. It's an elementary school. And so you see yeah, sure. a lot of. A lot of great ones, but a lot of weird you ones. You see a lot of situations. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, he could not be more normal, more well-adjusted. Wow. So up for That's anything. Cool. So kind. Um, really funny. Easy to talk to. Normal human being. Who yeah. was nominated for an Oscar when he was, like, 10. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, yeah, Insane. He's amazing. Love him. That's awesome. Love yeah, that's him. Cool. And also, like, did you guys have, a, like, a conversation before you came to set of, like, this is how we all, like, a pep talk or <laughs> like, How do we deal with yeah. it? I mean, I think we have a lot of those conversations. You know, first season, I think, uh, when R uh, Rob Corddry came on the show, yeah. that was, like, a big hero for us to get on the show. Yeah, sure. And Katie Carlton had to make out with him a bunch. <laughs> and she totally has a crush on him to begin with. Oh, that's funny. She oh, was God. melt. I mean, that was a meltdown. Sorry, yeah. Katie Carlton. But whatever. She but was no, just like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, how do I do this? How do this? But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we all just kind of like trying to play it cool. Yeah. You know, you do the thing I said. You you kind of like, do I make eye contact? Do I not? Can right. we talk between takes or do are we all preparing? What's right. happening? And he was just super easy. That's incredible. Yeah. Also, it's nice to have that support system built in with all of you guys that you're it's able great. to be like, I'm freaking out yeah. right yeah. now. Can this you like terrible. take the lead on this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Help me. Yeah. Okay. Someone wants to know, when do you think we're going to have flying cars? Oh, geez. Soon. <laughs> I so, hope so. I mean, they've been working on this since the the Jetsons, right? right? I mean, how do they not have this? Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Elon Musk has something going on right now. He's got a lot going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Who really knows? Know. Know. Every day really something does. new. Oh, <laughs> Where's that money going? I don't know. Oh. That guy's nuts. Um, okay, so wants to know if you weren't an actor, mm -hmm. what do you think you'd be doing on any given Wednesday afternoon at 1.37 p.m.? Uh, I'd hit the gym. <laughs> I'd be practicing my snatches. Yeah, just get swole, bro. And my cleans. I'm getting swole with my bros. I mean, probably that. Um, or back working at Starbucks. Oh, you know. yeah. If you didn't, like, if, if you didn't pursue yeah. comedy and entertainment, is yeah. there, like, another genre of occupation that you would dabble in? Yeah, you know, I'm kind of, uh, I, I did... I taught improv to high school kids in Chicago yeah, for six years. I read this. What which was, was that oh, like? Oh, I loved it. It was the most, it was such a rewarding job. Okay, because I feel like I could go I either way. It. It, and it did, <laughs> it did. But overall, you know, I, it was through this program, this wonderful program called After School Matters. Mm -hmm. And it's like all kinds of different programs for kids. And they would actually pay the kids a small stipend to do these after school programs oh, because cool. they were learning job skills. You yeah. treat it like a job. Oh, so cool. with my kids, they'd come in, they'd have to sign in. And if they didn't sign in or if they came in and signed in, at a different time. Yeah. I go, you know, if you worked at any other place and you did that, that's time theft. You can't do that. You Whoa. know, and you, you like right. teach them yeah. subtle job skills. So, so anyway, I taught after school matters for six years and I loved it. And like, it really got into my, like my nonprofit kind of, you know, heartstrings. My yeah. mom, my mom was a social worker for many years before she was a therapist and like was a nun. I mean, so there's wow. this kind of like social, it's in your genes. Yeah. It's so I, I, I think I would love to work for like a nonprofit or, or do, do work there maybe yeah maybe even do social work i feel like that's like the perfect age range to to start learning improv because it's, it's such a transitional point in your life it's that great. learning how to adjust and like say yes to all these things that you can't control i think are yeah. like very fundamental principles yeah that, and i don't know if you've heard about the chicago public school system yeah. there's a lot going on there I've and so for the kids it was really cool to see um, how they came out of their shells in certain ways um, and were able to just say things they weren't generally able to say. And for me, I got to the point where I stopped going to see improv shows at the improv theaters mm -hmm. because, I mean, I was doing improv with these kids three hours a day, three days a week. Wow. So I was watching improv all the time. Um, but I also was just bored by what they were doing on the stages at the improv theaters in yeah. Chicago because my kids were coming in and it was a totally diverse group of kids mm -hmm. from a totally different background. It wasn't all like white 25 year old yeah. dudes in Sauconies like yeah. pre <laughs> pretending to be uh -huh. who knows what their, their backgrounds 
it's just, you know, yeah. it's, everyone has their own experience, but these kids, the stuff they were doing was amazing. That's and cool. they were able to talk about things like race in a different way that like was really cool for me to see cool. and, uh, and poke fun at each other and be really open. And it was like life changing. That's super cool. I loved it. I miss Th- those Does the program still exist in Chicago? It does. Yeah, it does. After school matters. They're cool. always looking for, you know, funding. So throw some funding their way. That's awesome. That's yeah. Great. That's super cool. Um, okay, <laughs> on that serious of a note, someone wants to know, did you ever see Hillary Duff at TV Land HQ? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I, I don't think I ever crossed paths with Hillary Duff, sadly. But, uh, because at, yeah. she's on Younger, right? right? And Younger's the other like exactly. main like tentpole show that TV Land has. Yeah, we, um, we went to the premiere party. They had a joint premiere party for us. It was their sec- second season and our first season in New York. Uh-huh. And um, she was supposed to be there. And it's so sad. Her dog like drowned. <gasps> Whoa. Oh. And so she didn't make it. Damn. But I will say we yeah, met. Reason. Yeah, we met at Sutton Foster. <gasps> How was that? Oh my I think God. she's uh, she's so perfect. I think beautiful. she's too incredible that I don't think I'd be able to like have an actual human conversation. She's like with ten her. feet tall yeah. <laughs> and beautiful and kind and so talented and you know, like thoroughly modern Millie. She uh, was so wonderful. So we I met love her. Bunheads. Yeah. I love that show. Amy Sherman Palladino, baby. Yeah, that was so fantastic. Yeah, she was wonderful. So no, no, no sightings of her yet. But I will say, I I feel like there's a built-in crossover. I know. I know. It could be happening. Yeah, it makes sense. Please. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I did want to ask, you mentioned that there's, you work with a ton of kid actors on the show. Yeah. Um, What's like the most embarrassing or bizarre experience with child actors? Because I imagine, and Jack, you've worked with a ton of child actors. Yeah. That it's, you know, it's, it's, anything can happen. Oh God. Um, Okay, here we go. I got it. (laughs) When we were shooting the pilot, Uh uh, we were shooting this scene and I think it was just for the opening credits and it was the six of us and we're all walking down this hallway and it's Mm -hmm. sexy slow-mo or as sexy as six Midwestern girls who (laughs) are likened to administrative assistants and teachers all the time can be. And so we're walking down the hall, we're doing this sexy thing and then suddenly the doors open and kids come spilling into the hallway and this big group comes charging Mm -hmm. at us and we're like, oh no, and we break our (laughs) our trying too hard sexy look (laughs) and uh, and, and we were just improvising with the kids and yelling at them and telling them to stop and yeah. um, someone did not pass the message on to one of these little girls that we would be yelling at them and you're improvising acting, yeah. or acting. Oh, no. So oh, the kids come running down the hall oh, no. and my character is this dark character. And especially in the pilot, I had intense goth makeup. Sure. Like, <laughs> my, I was looked like a raccoon. Like oh, I yeah. was really, and oh, I, looked, yeah. I looked scary. Yeah, I was being skater boy. I was, well. ter- I was terrifying. <laughs> and this little girl runs up and, oh, no. and she was at the very tail end and so all the kids had passed and there's one little girl coming up in the behind and I'm like, and I think I ripped off uh, uh, Mean Girls and I just got like, you don't even go to this school. And she just started sobbing. Oh my God. Oh no. I, you know, and I don't like to hurt feelings. And I'm like, oh no, no, no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So the director pulls her aside and he's like, it's okay, honey, it's okay. She's like, I just didn't know if she was going to yell at me. And then I found out later that she also peed her pants. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> so okay, wait a minute. So you if made we, a girl wet herself. So if, if <laughs> like, and then I was like, girl, if you want to be in this business, you gotta learn how to act. I'm acting, <laughs> and I and I gave her a real, real good talking to, and now she's a star. Wow! wow. And it was Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it, was. Um, it was. Oh, that answers so many questions. I know. Wow. I know. I know. <laughs> That's. I mean, so oh hypothetically. My God. I, if someone were to go back and rewatch the pilot episode, yeah. would they be able to spot said pants pisser? I don't think so. Okay. That, that opening credit <laughs> was not, ed- we didn't end up using it. So that ca- oh came out. But God. like, wow. I mean, gosh, I, I wonder if that footage is floating around somewhere. It, someone has so to have it on a cutting room floor somewhere. I know. I um, know. If you out there that are listening have <laughs> access to this footage, please, please make us aware <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. Um, oh, this is interesting. Someone wants to know if uh, you had to play one other of the teachers on oh Teachers, God. which one would it be? Um, I think it, it it changes all the time, but mm-hmm. currently it's Miss Snap. She's oh, yeah. so rotten. Um, <laughs> like she's you're drawn, just you're drawn to the good characters. Yeah, <laughs> she's just well, she's just so like 
I mean, we've made her more heinous every season. Yeah, yeah. Where she says the most, you know, bizarre things ever. But it, it's just fun. It's fun to play that, like, sha, whatever. Like, yeah. I'm the shit, whatever. Kind of care. It's just fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just um, come blissfully ignorant of yeah. your own self-identity. Yeah. yeah. And Miss Bennigan, for a while, was was a, was a close one because she is so weird and yeah. quirky. And she can kind of just play this... I don't know. She's just from another planet in yeah. the best way, and I love I love watching her play that. No, it's super super. That, I mean, that's what's so fun about all the characters is they have this like fun sense of like insane whimsy yeah. to them. Um, someone wants to know if you were a teacher, mm-hmm. what subject would you most enjoy teaching? And uh, some and they also mm-hmm. said also I love this show so much. Aww. Hashtag Aunt Hair. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's a, that's a deep cut. That's that's mm-hmm. the pilot. Yeah, we got a photo oh, connected. That was yeah. a bit. We were so happy to put that little wig, <laughs> that little Kate Gosling wig yes. on um, this uh-huh. little tiny girl. So fun. Um, I I think maybe I would teach, I mean, probably at this point, English. I think that, you know, I'm writing. Let's write. Let's write, guys. Let's there write creative writing stories. Creative writing. Just writing just rape happened. and abuse. Um, <laughs> but it's okay. Okay, so wants to know what is your go-to drink? Um, well, we were talking earlier. I mean, I mean, mainline Lacroix all day. Oh uh, yeah, and you have adjusted you know, to Los Angeles. Yeah, I really have. <laughs> we're tra- I'm sort of the back in Chicago. Let me just say, yeah, I don't know. Cool. They're everywhere. No, they're, yeah. I don't know why we only associate them with LA because it's writers room. It's writers room yeah. drink, you know. Um, but in terms of alcohol, uh, I love a Gold Rush. Oh, love a gold, What's rush. gold rush! It's like whiskey and uh, some lemon and some honey. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds it's like a it's like a it's hot like a toddy, cold, hot but it's toddy, cold. Yeah. yeah, yeah, room temperature hot toddy. <laughs> <toddy. laughs> well, preferably cold, but I mean, if you want it neat, I'm not going to judge you. That sounds great, actually. Um, okay, someone wants to know: as a teacher's kid, how do you feel about teachers? As a teacher's kid, is one of, you said your dad. No, no. Your mom is my a mom's therapist. a therapist. My dad was a as a writer. I'm okay. not a teacher's kid. So, does but your, okay. Well, then, as a therapist kid, yeah. How does your mom feel about or how do teachers? You, or, yeah. <laughs> I guess because teachers, in a way, I feel like are therapists. Like they yeah. have to handle like the emotional yeah. ruckus that kids cause in yeah, classrooms. I mean, I mean, I I admire teachers so much, and yeah. that's part of why the show is so fun for us. Is we get to say the things on the show that I think a lot of teachers want to oh, say. I'm sure. Well, I mean, the, the feedback that you get. I'm sure you do get a lot of actual teachers yeah. that watch the oh, show. Oh, we get a ton, and that's the biggest are, compliment. What do they like say? It. They're like, "You nailed it." Most of them or love like, it. Too real. There's <laughs> most of them love it. I, I, yeah. But we do get a lot of angry messages where people are like, "You're disrespecting teachers. Uh-huh. It's a hard person." And it's like, no, no, no. And it's a lot of people who don't. I think maybe watch the show or right. understand take uh, something out of context yeah, yeah i mean it's 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 dumb it's like these dummies mm-hmm. who are happen to be teachers it's not a saying teachers are dumb right it's sure. you know these are the situations yeah. like a teacher wants to tell the worst kid in the class the most you know obnoxious kid he's yeah. a dick but she can't right and yeah. she, she's a good teacher she doesn't but on our show we might they break the rules sure yeah they say what the teachers are thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and I think uh, good teachers probably try to repress those thoughts so that yeah. when you say them, they're like, no way, we don't think like that. No, oh, they do. And they're and they're not allowed to have feelings. They're supposed to be right. perfect. They're, they're on a pedestal. They can't, like, you they're know. Be the well, when you pay yeah. them that much, I, I mean, know. I have high standards. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I know. And Come all those, on. like, bonuses. Yeah. Sitting everything. up there in their ivory towers. I know, right? <laughs> Just bankrolling all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they're Scrooge McDuck pools they're having into. God, we really need to do uh, something about that. Yeah. <laughs> what for you has been the craziest scene or episode to shoot so far? Um, oh gosh, we've had a lot of crazy ones. Um, we did this one where we were um, uh, on a ropes course, oh. like a team building kind of mm-hmm. ropes yeah. course thing, and it was very hot. Um, oh. And so we were climbing up on these things, and I kind of like that stuff, so I was having a great time. But oh, yeah, you're back at the gym. Oh yeah, at the girl, box. girl, I'm in the box. I'm like, look. <laughs> I'm gonna hold on to this pole for a long time because of my snatches. Um, I love saying snatch. Um, but uh, it was crazy because it was so hot, and like two of the girls, uh, like, said they were afraid of heights but <laughs> didn't really communicate how afraid of heights they were so oh, like no. we no, got up we got up there we had we had stunt doubles to do some of the like crazier sure. stuff but um oh, no. like poor Caitlin Barlow and Kate Freeman were up on this platform just like oh. shitting themselves oh. I mean that would have been, me. been there yeah I mean they That's, were so ugh. terrified so that became a thing and then Katie Carlton uh didn't drink enough water that day and oh, no. ended up like 
vomiting. Oh god! Um, and like, she finished the day with a. There was a bucket. Oh um, my like, god! We're like thirty feet in the air, and there's this platform we're all standing on, and there's a bucket in between <laughs> oh, tanks oh where Katie no. Collin is like hurling into a bucket, and so I think oh. that was just like. Physically, the most strenuous yeah. one. Sure, I mean, it was, sounds like it. it was, wow. For like, yeah, it was um, totally worth it. Oh, and there were tons of bees. I think everyone got stung by bees that day. It was a thing. <laughs> She's the yeah. yeah, there were no cameras actually. This was no. just no, like it was a just Saturday. Saturday. It was you a might, you might want to call your union. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Teachers, they're just like us. <laughs> um, Catherine, we're coming to the end yeah. of this episode. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, every guest gets a customized fortune cookie oh my for God. being Thanks. here on Not Too Deep and giving us your time. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. All right, let's see. Very intense scenario. Okay, listen. Piper feels bad about the diarrhea bed incident. <laughs> it's fine that you put her on blast on social media, but come on, we've all done it, right? Oh, Valentine's Day. I didn't want to talk about it, but <laughs> we have to. Yeah, <laughs> she was having tummy issues the week of Valentine's Day, and the most romantic week she of the year. kept <laughs> pooping on the carpet, which she never does. And so we're like, let's lock her. She's good at waking us up. Let's close the bedroom door so she can't get out of the bedroom. And if she's got to get up, she'll definitely wake us up. Yeah. And it was like 4 a.m. Oh, no. And I just hear in my husband go, "Honey, don't roll over." <laughs> oh, no. And she had oh, no. diarrhea. Because she burrows. She's got that little yeah, terrier yeah. thing that she oh, burrows sure. under the cover so she sleeps. And she had just diarrhea oh under the under oh, the covers. no. Um, wow. And I was like, good for you, girl. <laughs> good for you. Happy Valentine's Day. It's a memorable one. Oh, wow. What a She feels her. better now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, so well, do I. <laughs> well, Catherine, thank you so much for being here. Where can people find you online and where can they watch teachers if they don't yeah. already know? So um, you can find me online on social media at Miss Catherine Renee. Yeah, don't get it confused with that. Katie Thomas. Don't Other go to Katie Thomas. Thomas. Com, <laughs> unless you like that, no judgment. Um, so Catherine Renee, Miss Catherine Renee on Twitter and Instagram. And then um, you can watch Teachers on TV Land every Tuesday night at 10.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 9.30 Central. Uh, and you can watch, you can catch up on demand. You can buy seasons on iTunes. And They're Amazon. in the middle of season three. So Check go catch out. up. It's everywhere. Thank you, Catherine, Renee, Thomas. Thank we'll you. see you guys next time on another episode of Not Too Deep. Goodbye. Bye. Too deep, too deep, too deep. Too deep. Not too Not deep. deep. With Grace Helbig. This summer, step up your grill game with the revolutionary Beyond Burger. This mouth-watering masterpiece is the only plant-based burger that is so meaty, it's sold in the meat case at local grocery stores. Packed with protein, it's better for you and the planet, and will satisfy even the most ravenous of carnivores. Are you ready to taste the future of protein? Visit beyondmeat.com grace to find a local retailer near you. That's beyondmeat.com grace. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated. Produced and directed by Jack Ferry. Producer Melissa D. Mons. With writing by Diane Kang. Audio support by Chris Henry. Editing by Melissa D. Mons. And an extra special thank you to Flula for the theme music. Music.